Goose Island Bourbon County is the original bourbon barrel aged stout and today I get to try it for the very first time. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today I'm going to get to try Goose Island Bourbon County Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout for the very first time and this thing is a bit of a legend despite being owned by Goose Island who well years and years ago were considered proper kind of you know groundbreaking pushing through contributors to the American craft beer scene but well, then they got bought out by AB and Bev and it all got a bit, you know, maybe it's not really all there anymore. But for some reason, the Bourbon County Imperial Stout raises heads every single year. And this year is no different, but this year's bottle isn't what I've got in front of me. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that on this label, on this bottle in front of me, it actually says 2021. And that is because, well, this is the year that this was made. The reason I've not drunk it before now is because, well, firstly, actually, I don't think I got this until 2022. And on the note of where I got it from, big shout out to Paul's Beer Reviews. He gifted me this when we met for the very first time and well, maybe it was the second time, but it doesn't matter. He gifted me this anyway. And yeah, I was very, very appreciative. Um, and on the back of this label here, if you can see that because of, yeah, you can, yeah. Develops in the bottle for up to five years. Now I figure, it's 2024 now. It's been three years or at least two and a half years since this was bottled. So it's kind of in the middle and in the middle seems like a good place to find out how good it really is. They claim to be the uh, the original bourbon barrel aged stout. Now, those of you who follow this channel will know I'm a big fan of beer, stout and bourbon. So in theory, this is a big tick in all boxes. It doesn't actually say how strong it is. Now, <laughs> I've looked all over this bottle and there is not a single ABV mark on this thing. It's a very nice bottle, I'll show you in a second. But yeah, there is nowhere does it say how strong this really is. Now I've looked it up, 14.4% allegedly for the 2021 <laughs> variant. So it's going to be proper pokey and it is a pint, it's a US pint, but it's a pint bottle which is 0.9 fluid ounces so before we break into a quick look at this bottle I'm kind of need to do this in two halves really because the label at the top is a thing of beauty all on its own it's got this nice little purposely flappy bit and you can see there Goose Island Bourbon County with all the info on the front there and then again a bit more detail on the back uh, the front of the bottle itself is well it's kind of blank but I don't know if you can tell it's etched so you've got the Goose Island logo just here etched formed into the glass and then uh, etched is the wrong word embossed it's probably the right one and then you can see there it says goose island bourbon county brand since 1992 i think that says there and then on the back we do get a proper label where you would think it said how strong it is but uh but no there's a description a health warning probably because it's 14 odd percent and also to enjoy in a snifter and I will be doing just that although in the biggest and greatest snifter of them all the massive pint sized stem de Legra. so well we can fit it all in now then only get one shot at this I really hope the camera is recording let's get it open oh it smells boozy it smells really really boozy now this beer has a whopping four and a half nearly as a rating on untapped, or at least it did. Last time I checked, that could have changed in the interim. But uh, that is, that's engine oil. Look at it. Look at the flow and the pour on that. Wow. Right then, uh, no surprises. That is as dark as dark beer really gets. Absolutely no light bleed through whatsoever it's got a very thin quite a dark head on it it's kind of toffee colored don't imagine it'll stick around given the abv if it is indeed 14.4 percent um but 
it looks decent, it looks like an impy stout, it looked beautiful pouring into the glass, so yeah, not much more to say about the visual. Aroma time. Smells boozy, it does smell like bourbon, but it's got a real thick, rich, decadent, chocolate, jammy, fruity, cake, black forest, gatto, super raisin forward, like raisins and nuts, like you know that trail mix, like it's got a lot of that going on. Big, bold, rich flavours, smells absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm sure this will change quite a lot as we get through the beer, but right now, that does smell absolutely stunning. Now in terms of whiskey notes from this beer, what am I expecting? Well, it is aged for up to, I think it's 14 months. What is interesting about this is that it's not beer put into one whiskey barrel or two barrels or whatever that are all the same and then just kind of emptied, put into bottles and gone out. They actually use barrels from three different US distilleries and if memory serves me correctly, that is Heaven Hill, which makes things like Elijah Craig, uh, Buffalo Trace, who make Buffalo Trace, uh, Eagle Rare, Stag, E.H. Taylor, loads of, loads of stuff. Uh, and Wild Turkey, and to be honest, Wild Turkey and Buffalo Trace make some of my favorite stuff ever. And let's be honest, Heaven Hill ain't bad either. So yeah, I'm expecting quite different notes. All three have distinctly different flavor profiles. But as I was saying, they put the stout into three different types of barrels, or multiples off probably, and then they blend it all back together to end up with something, yeah this just like this which is going to be very different indeed right then aromas are still yeah i can't get away from that raisin thing like big boozy raisins there's a hint of savory a hint of chocolate it's starting to go down like a tiffin route if you've ever had that i don't know how traditional tiffin is to like is that a regional thing in the uk does everyone know what it is i don't know you get the idea but yeah that kind of thing anyway i'm gonna get into it now cheers happy first beer trying That might be the best impy stout I've ever had. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had some absolutely wild things from the over-the-top, decadent, indulgent, like Emperor's Brewery. My local brewery, Blue Monkey, do some absolutely phenomenal, kind of straight-up, no-nonsense, barrel-aged impies. But this... This is special. Like, this is... It's just finesse. Now, there's a very, very real risk that if I just keep talking and having the old sip, then, well, by the end of this video, I'm not gonna make any sense at all because it is 14.4%. So I'm quite keen to give you a quick rundown, top to bottom taste test of the beer itself before we get carried away. And I have no doubt, the problem with beers like this is they are session beers. They, they are meant to last you a duration of a session, really. It is effectively at least three beers in one bottle, so, I need to take my time over it, and as a result, it will change. But I'm going to give you my opinions on it as it stands right here, right now. For reference, I got this out the fridge about 45 minutes before we started to film. My beer fridge is kept at about 8 degrees, so it's very close to room temperature, but just a little bit lower. And I think really that is where you want to start a beer like this, because ultimately you get to try it a little bit cooler. And then in maybe half an hour's time from now, it'll be bang on room temperature. And by the time I finish it, well, yeah, it's going to be at least room temperature and probably a bit higher because, well, because the heat exchange from my hands and all that sort of stuff. So let's get into this right on the tip of the tongue. It's slightly bitter cocoa powder and just a hint of dried raisin sultana, that kind of thing. What's really standing out already about this beer is how defined the flavor notes are. Normally I sit down and kind of, you know, test any beer, but impy stouts in particular are quite bad for this, is that you kind of just got a mishmash of it kind of tastes like vanilla and it's got some caramel and it's got some and you're trying to pick these apart like these are distinct tasting notes like they anyone can pick this out because it's so obvious it's so on the nose it's unreal then before i get carried away again over the first third of the tongue bit of licorice coming in it's quite sweet it's not that roasty and what's weird is the alcohol really does not burn at all in this it's really easy to drink but yeah, it's kind of licorice, treacly, molassesy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's sweet, it's rich, but it's not sugary sweet. It's dense, kind of almost not quite into char, but you can definitely see that influence from those charred bourbon barrels. Then over the mid palate, the fruity notes really start to come in on their own. Bit spritzy, like it's not heavily carbonated, but there's just a bit of dancing around going on on the tongue. 
The fruit though, it's like rich, gooey berries and cherries. Think, you know, Black Forest Gatto. I've talked a lot about Black Forest Gattos recently because I did a review of two Black Forest Gatto stouts. This tastes more like Black Forest Gatto stout and everything else that it tastes like than they did just trying to do one thing. Like it is an absolutely fantastic, just, it's just fantastic, I'll be honest. But then over the back of the tongue, it's going to get a real kind of um, like bakewell tart, marzipan, almond, I guess is the connector of those two. Um, kind of semi savory, slightly nutty, slightly what's that? And I'll be honest, I'm not a big almond fan, but it does just work in this. It kind of introduces a little bit of extra, I guess just semi savouriness without taking it all the way into kind of proper dry peanut shell and that sort of thing you can get out of bourbon sometimes to try and round off what is otherwise a very decadent very sweet it's i don't want to call it over the top because it just works the mouth feels there the consistency the quantity of flavors the intensity the way it plays around on your palate it's just so refined and so it's just so perfect compared to almost any other imperial style it's really yeah it's magic it's really magic on the aftertaste slightly drying a bit more of that nutty less almondy though like it is more generic peanut kind of savory thing and we're going to dark rich chocolate truffles back in with the black forest gatto fruit bit of vanilla and a bit i'm trying to find the real distinct bourbon notes in here because really early in the aftertaste just after you swallowed it what i just called a kind of peanutty generic savoriness actually starts to show a bit of a flare of oak it's a little bit that barrel note it's a little bit oh yeah woody really more than anything else it is that what's fascinating is how this doesn't really taste like any of the bourbons that are used to make it of course it's just the barrels not the product itself but at the same time doesn't taste like any other stouts either it's just it's a difficult review when you've got nothing bad to say about it because it's really hard to feel like i'm giving a balanced opinion and all the rest of it look this is sat in my fridge for a while because it's like am i gonna like it am i gonna not and then I don't know, it's, it's one of those beers I'm probably never going to get to try again, or at least not for a very long time. What really sells it for me is it's big, it's rich and indulgent, as I said, but it's not too much. And there's this kind of, what starts off as kind of cocoa powder on the tip of the tongue, it flows throughout the whole thing into this more looks chocolatey, truffly experience. And it feels so authentic. It's not, doesn't feel like a chocolate flavoured stout. It just feels like I'm drinking this thing and it's reminding me of so many distinct flavors the chocolate the fruit and everything else that doesn't feel like they've been added like it just feels like it's meant to be there it's natural it's balanced it's but it's just absolutely fantastic i appreciate not the best review going of this beer i am absolutely certain but it was worth letting you know exactly how good i think this is because if you get a chance like you can't pass this up if you like an imperial style it feels like what i want other imperial stouts to be that's the best description i can give on it um is there any more info on this bottle before we wrap this up they say it's the original bourbon barrel aged stout i don't really know if they were the first or not but they seem to be claiming to be um first or not i don't know but certainly certainly one of the best goose island bourbon county the original brand stout this doesn't really say much else at all i think really that is all i've got to say about it other than well i'm going to go and sit down and enjoy this for the rest of the night because it is just absolutely incredible. Paul from Paul's Beer Reviews, I need to thank you again, sir. Cheers, because that, well, that is not a beer I would have willingly given away, truthfully. It is that good, but much appreciated. And on the off chance that you're not subscribed to Paul's Beer Reviews channel, well, I'll put a link in the description for you because, well, he deserves it after giving me that because that is just absolutely scintillating and that really is all i've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you will be so kind and i'll catch you next time cheers